and welcome to Wrestling Nostalgia. I am your host, Dave Dynasty. Thank you for joining us. Hey, last week I did uh, wrestling headlines, right? And I talked through some wrestling headlines and people loved it. Man, the download numbers were amazing on this. I, I don't understand. Uh, I didn't think it would be that big a hit. It was something I was just trying to do to kind of wrap up some loose ends. But man, you, you guys seem to like it. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to talk some more wrestling headlines today and uh, see what happens here. Uh, before we do that, though, let's uh, let's get take care of some housekeeping. Uh, hey, keep in mind, coming up, I will be on Brian Solomon's podcast, Shut Up and Wrestle, on the Arcadian Vanguard Network. I think it's coming out in a couple weeks here. Uh, we're almost to mine. Uh, so go subscribe to his podcast. It's a great podcast anyway, even when I'm not on it. It is a great podcast. Go subscribe to it uh, so that you can make sure to catch it. And when you hear my episode, uh, give me some feedback, right? Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you think. And if you want to hit me up on Twitter, it's easy to do. I'm at the Dave Dynasty. That is the best way to find me. You can also look me up on Facebook. You can also look at me up on Instagram. Twitter's where I'm most active. So follow me there at the Dave Dynasty. And of course, make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube. It is youtube.com slash the Dave Dynasty. Uh, not only do I have this podcast here, right? Not only do I have Rest and Nostalgia, I also have a couple other podcasts that I personally do. I have one called This Is Extreme, which is an ECW history podcast. We put out our first episode uh, covering August 1994 and the birth of Extreme. I know it was a little dry. It was me reading through a lot of notes and things. But I kind of felt it was the podcast I had to do to get this thing kicked off, to talk about where ECW started. The next episode, I don't really have a set schedule on this. I'm going to try to be monthly with it, but it's just I'm not putting something out until it's ready and uh, until I feel like it's good. Uh, the next episode is going to be about the ECW video games. We've got a couple of guests that are going to be on in interviews that are very integral and key in this video game community, uh, the ECW video game community, and it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to really enjoy it, so go subscribe to This is Extreme wherever you are. And if you ever want to hear me just chat and blabber about other things in life, non-wrestling, or typically non-wrestling, then go look up uh, the podcast about nothing and everything. That is my podcast also where I just discuss all the other passions in my life. Whether it be movies, TV, comics, books, music, whatever, toys, I mean, whatever it is, I will talk about it on there. It is the podcast about nothing and everything. The uh, The cover art is just white with black letters, very generic, uh, and you'll see it. It's a very simple podcast. It's just me talking about other stuff. So uh, go subscribe to those two uh, so that uh, you can get all of your Dave Dynasty feels all the time. Now, before we really get into things and get any further... Let me just take a moment uh, to remember Scott Hall. Uh, of course, everybody knows now Scott Hall passed away uh, recently. Um, you know, let me give you my memories of Scott Hall. I remember him uh, in the AWA primarily, right? Starting out. That's my first kind of remembrance of him. Um, of course, back then, I was even then, I was a researcher, kind of a historian. So I did read in some of my old magazines and stuff about him doing the, uh, the team with Dan Spivey. Uh, before, but I remember him teaming with Kurt Henning in that brief AWA uh, bit, and thinking, "Ah, oh, he's pretty cool," you know. He, you know, big guy had that Magnum TA look at the time, or Magnum PI look, whichever you want to call it, at the time with the mustache. And then I remember him showing up in WWF and uh, doing the Razor Ramon thing. And at first, I thought, "Oh, Razor Ramon, they've given him this this gimmick. Oh, they, they've they've done the WWF thing, and they've given this guy uh, this." And I thought, and I and I almost immediately just wrote it off. I thought, man, it's whatever. This is going to be another one of these guys with with that, you know. And uh, but you know, but he but he turned me around. I was not what I would call a huge Razor Ramon fan, but I enjoyed what he did. And I think you know he took what could have really, let's be honest, what could have really been a very silly gimmick that could have failed in a lot of circumstances, and he actually made it very likable, pretty cool. Uh, at the time and had a good run in WWF. But then of course, you know, he went to WCW and there was the outsider thing, the NWO thing. And man, the, the dude changed professional wrestling, right? He was the first guy to show up there. The first guy to kick this off uh, that, you know, with the guarantee contracts and all this and that, and the invasion angle and, uh, and making things that and a lot of what he did changed the face of professional wrestling. And uh, you can't deny that. Right. And I know, um, you know, people get these discussions. Oh, Razor should have been a world champion. Oh, Scott Hall should have been a world champion. And there's all these talks and blah, blah, blah. I don't think Scott Hall cared, man. He just seemed to enjoy wrestling, seemed to enjoy doing what he's doing. And I know he had some demons and uh, some things in his past 
but I mean, we all do, right? And then I, I feel like he made some amends for those things, uh, and was uh, was was all right at the end, and was was doing things right. And uh, I hate to see he was too young to go, and uh, I do feel for his family and his his friends and everything else, and and us as fans that you know that he's gone. Uh, so, uh, you know, a little tip of the cap in, in in memory of Scott Hall. All right, now let's get our plug in. Uh, for the month here, or for the week, excuse me, uh, for Manscaped. Guys, March Madness is here, and not everyone can have a perfect bracket, but you can have the perfect set of balls this tournament season with the sponsors of today's show, Dress and Nostalgia, Manscaped. Guys, you hear this on all the podcasts, but man, go check it out. I'm, I'm telling you, Manscaped, is, 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 it's for real, right? You hear all the hype, you hear all the talk. It is for real. They are the leaders in below-the-waist grooming, and they have just launched their, launched their ultra-premium collection to give you the total championship hygiene routine. So after sweating out the games, make sure you lather up head to toe with this all-in-one skin and hair kit to have your body and balls smelling final four fresh. Join the 4 million men, including me, worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the code DYNASTY20, D-Y-N-A-S-T-Y-2-0 for 20% off and free shipping. This is a Cinderella story you're not going to want to miss. Uh, the package includes the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer. Uh, that is, man, this thing, I can't hype it enough. It is so, so great. Uh, the premium collection packaging also includes premium deodorant, hydrating body moisturizer, body wash, the two in one shampoo and conditioner, plus a free gift, a three pack set of lip balm. Uh, guys, you're going to want to go get this package. You're going to want the lawnmower. You're going to want to use Manscaped. Uh, trust me. It's worth it. I use it all the time. Damn near daily, I use my Manscaped products. And, um, guys, I wouldn't, you know, I give them the, the, the trial runs on here. We right, we plug them for a while here all the time. And I wouldn't bring them on board if I don't believe in the products, right? I really, really love their products. And you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code DYNASTY20 at manscaped.com. D-Y-N-A-S-T-Y-2-0. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using my code DYNASTY20. Make sure you call on Manscaped this tournament season or your bracket won't be the only thing that is busted. All right, now let's get to some other headlines here. And again, these are things that just caught my eye, right? This is by, by no means, this is not all the news happening in professional wrestling. This may not even be the biggest news. Who knows? But this is the news that I'm interested in. Uh, and I would feel that since you listen to my show, that you would probably be interested in it also. And what I mean by this is why right, I, I like nostalgic wrestling. I like old school wrestling. That's what I'm a fan of. But there is some stuff going on now that catches my eye. Stuff that I feel has the flavor of old school wrestling or inspires the memory of old school wrestling. And there are there are some talented people and some talented things out there. So this is my look at headlines that catch my eye and that I feel are integral and important. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? This is it doesn't matter. It's just a discussion. Right. This is this is, you know, supposed to be fun. One thing that is I, I am a toy collector, right? I do love collecting toys. I don't collect a overabundance of wrestling figures, per se. I do collect wrestling memorabilia, right? Lots of magazines, lots of newsletters, uh, lots of DVDs, videos of uh, books. I have a ton of books. You know, you all know that I love books if you follow my social media at all. But I do collect wrestling figures from guys that I love and that I enjoy. And that includes four men that are going to be coming out. Uh, from Figures Toy Company, right? Figures Inc. Uh, I'm not, a, again, I'm not a huge fan of their figures overall. I do, I love their Jim Cornette figures. I like how they're molded and I think they look pretty good. And they've got, but they've got four figures coming out in their Legends line that I've got to get. I've just got to get it. And it's related to Jim Cornette. It is Bobby Eaton, Stan Lane, Dennis Condry, and Tom Pritchard, right? The Midnight Express, the Heavenly Bodies, that foursome. I got to get them, right? When they come out, I've got to get them. Speaking of Cornette, they also coming out at jimcornette.com. He is going to have a bloody variant of his figure and a announcer set of his figure. And again, bloody variants, not I don't really, you know, it's not my thing. I just don't feel the need to take a figure, splatter some blood, and that's it. But, but this is a repaint of the figure and the white jacket and everything else with the blood. So what this is, is a callback to when the original Midnight Express come into the NWA and Paulie and them attacked Cornette, busted him up with the phone, and he had the white jacket. This is, this is a callback to that. This is a tribute to that. So it makes sense, and I love it. I can't wait to get it. The announcer said, again, has him painted up in his announced getup. It's a repaint of the figure with an announced disc and all that. I don't care about the announced disc and all that, but i got to have the figure. 
Uh, so again, I will be getting those four guys, the two new Jim Cornette figures. Uh, so if you're a toy collector and you like those kind of figures, uh, go check those out. Of course, the, the big news that everybody knows now, uh, moving on, is Jeff Hardy is now in the AEW, is in AEW, the AEW. Man, I'm showing my age there, aren't I? Right? Anyway, Jeff Hardy is in AEW, and that means the Hardys are reunited once again. And uh, I, I'm not a huge Hardys fan. I liked them, you know, back in the day. I thought they were innovative uh, and enjoyable. But why this is this is noteworthy to me is, man, we can get some really cool matchups here, right? And I know some of them have probably happened before, but we can we can see it again, right? We can see the, you know, the Hardys against the Young Bucks. While I'm not a fan of Young Bucks, still you, we want to see that match. We, uh, you know, the the Hardys versus Santana or Ortiz, and some of the other teams. And uh, of course, you know, my favorites, FTR. I, I want to see the Hardys and FTR at some point. Uh, so I think it's a pretty cool thing they've reunited. And Jeff Hardy's been doing a lot of appearances and talking about a lot of things related to his WWE release and, and everything else. Uh, so anyway, Hardy's back reunited in AEW. Now, right, you're listening to a podcast, so I assume on some level you're a fan of podcasts. I'm a huge fan of podcasts. I listen to so many podcasts, I, I, it's hard for me to keep up sometimes. And thankfully, I have a job where I work from home and I can have podcasts on and kind of in the background as I'm working a lot of times, and that's how I stay up on it. I'm pretty selective with what I listen to, though, right? Because uh, there's some out there that I just I don't like. I don't enjoy. It's no offense, whatever, but it just doesn't catch my ear, hold my interest. Hopefully you don't think that about mine. <laughs> anyway, uh, but, you know, I, I like to give lots of podcasts that have topics that I'm interested in a try. And with wrestling, I really love podcasts from guys that I really love, right? I love the Arn Anderson podcast. I'm not a huge fan of Conrad Thompson and his podcast. I don't have any problem with Conrad. I just don't like all the ads constantly, constantly, constantly. I get it. You're making money, making good money. I get it. I Who knows? Maybe I do the same in that same position. Anyway, I do enjoy the Arn Anderson. But anyway, what this brings me to is the headline that Mick Foley has announced he's coming out with his own podcast called Foley is Pod. Man, I can't wait to hear this. Love Mick Foley. Huge fan of Mick Foley and all his incarnations. Uh, and I can't wait because this guy has been around, right, from the territorial days through ECW, through uh, WCW through uh, WWF, WWE, uh, he did time and impact. He's He's gone back to WWE, different roles. He's been an author. Uh, he's done so much. I mean, in Japan, he's huge. So much. And he's got so many stories. I cannot wait. And he's such a good guy, such a nice guy. So it's going to be fun. He's entertaining. He's a good talker. It's going to be, this is going to be great. Now, again, I'm kind of hoping it's not on the Conrad Thompson Network, but we'll see. Since Foley kind of independently released the news himself, I tend to hope or believe that maybe it's not because I felt like Conrad would have put it out there first with Foley just sharing it. I don't know, though. But we'll see. There's more information supposed to be coming up about the podcast, like when it's coming out, who's going to be his co-host. Uh, the Who knows? Mick Foley, the way he is, uh, Mick Foley may not have a co-host, right? Who knows? He may have guests and just with whatever he's talking about to discuss and they chat back and forth. That would be cool. Right. And he may just have a guy, someone produce it. Who knows? I mean, this is the guy that started the, the wrestling book trend. Right. And he wrote it himself. Uh, he didn't have a ghostwriter or anything else. So who knows how he's going to do this? He might take a, a, a kind of a different approach. Anyway, can't wait to hear more about it. Can't wait to give it a try. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what that goes. I'm, I'm hoping I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm hoping I'm excited for that podcast. So let's wrap up. One of my favorite topics, of course, you all know, is FTR. They are my favorite thing going in professional wrestling today. Absolutely love them. And, of course, uh, if you follow them at all, or if you follow wrestling, or if you follow Ring of Honor, you have seen that it has finally been signed. You've heard me talk about it on and on and on. And you're probably like, Dave, shut the fuck up. Right? It's finally happening at the Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor, April 1st in Dallas. It is going to be FTR challenging the Briscoes for the Ring of Honor Tag Team title. Holy crap, take my money. I can't wait. The match I've been waiting for years to see is finally happening. It's happening in the Ring of Honor ring. This is going to be our first chance to see kind of what Tony Khan's Ring of Honor is going to be like. And this match alone has got me sold on this show at least. So we'll see where it goes from there. Khan is, he's, he has announced that, hey, there will be weekly Ring of Honor TV. There has been talk that it's going to be kind of a development, which it can work if you do it in the right way. But uh, but he has also talked about how he's going to use some talent from AEW over in Ring of Honor 
to give it some draws, give it some pizzazz, give it some whatever. FTR would be perfect for a little run over there, right? They're not getting used on AEW. Go let them get a run in Ring of Honor. I hope they win the tag titles, right? I I, I really do because I'm so big. I love FTR and their, their, their quest for their legacy. And what would help their legacy more than just, man, another championship notch in that belt? So, uh, anyway, I can't wait to see that match. Uh, that is going to be great. Speaking of FTR, they are teasing. There is there's a huge tease that Bret Hart will be managing FTR. Have you seen some of this? Right, FTR they uh, they fired Tully. There has been talk about a new manager. Apparently, the Young Bucks in a promo talking about FTR dropped some lines about it didn't matter if they got someone who was the best there ever was or something to that effect. Uh, you know, FTR has went on Twitter pleading. Uh, with Brett to manage them, they, we both know, or we all know, that they are huge Brett Hart fans. Uh, that would be cool. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if Brett is interested in doing something like this. Again, we've talked the 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 AEW schedule is not super grueling. There's not a lot of travel. There's not a lot of house shows. There's not a, a lot of all that. So maybe Brett would. Uh, again, it would be super cool. I'd love to see Brett on the TV every week. I'd love to see FTR. Uh, Don in the pink and black, uh, pink and black, some attire. God, that would be awesome. That would be great. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Brett, a huge fan of FTR. If you put those together, ah, you, you sold, right? So anyway, there's some, there's some, excuse me, there are some headlines uh, from wrestling recently. They caught my eye. Hopefully they caught yours. Hopefully you enjoyed me discussing them. Hopefully you, you enjoyed this little, this little snippet. One good thing is I, I don't take these headline episodes and drag them out for an hour, hour and a half, whatever. I give it to you in a nice chunk. I try to keep it. Uh, around the 15 minute mark so that it's easily easily digestible uh, but even if you knew all these news headlines hopefully you found this entertaining uh, and again go follow me on twitter at the dave dynasty and hit me up i like to interact i like to discuss tell me what you thought uh, if you got any headlines that pop up that maybe i didn't catch that you want me to talk about hey put them out there if you got any questions for me put it out there if you feel like you should be a guest on my show uh, that you've got something to offer put it out there let's talk I'm all about that. So until next week, wherever you go and whatever you do, be good, be safe, and keep on growing.